All right, so welcome back in. Today, we're gonna dive into the metaverse and really get into kind of the projects that are really making some waves in a big way. And part of this is around mining. Now, you probably think, mining in the metaverse? Can you do that, Paul? Yes, you can. We're gonna show you how, what projects to watch, all that good stuff right here today. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to TechPath. Let's dive into it. There's two tokens we're gonna to cover today and really dive in a little deeper on each one of them. One of them we've talked to their founder and their CEO uh, a couple of times here on the show. I would recommend go check, uh, check, take a look at and check out our video on Helium. Now, Helium is an interesting project because it is really a, um, it's one of those projects that just really kind of, to me, sets the stage for utility in blockchain. And what I mean by that is if you're looking at projects around all of these potentials out there, and especially in the altcoin side of things, you're always looking, or at least me, I'm always looking for utility. What, what can the project do? Or does it have some sort of unique tech or ability to do something that can earn me money, but it has utility built into it. Helium is one of those. Now, before we dive in too deep, I wanna thank our sponsor, I Trust Capital. I Trust Capital is a pretty cool uh, feature of building out your own IRA through crypto. And the way you can do it is jump over to I Trust Capital's website, buy and sell anytime you want. It's like a mini exchange that's gonna give you the full capacity to trade your tokens in and out within your I Trust Capital IRA account. And you can do it 24 seven, just like a regular program. You don't, because there's a lot of uh, IRAs out there that you have to go through you know, one of your uh, agencies, or maybe you're dealing with a, an advisor on it. This one is a DIY program that really gets you into crypto in a good way. And very low cost, good tax advantage. You can still do this before um, the April 15th deadline, which is really great because you can still take this in as your 2021 tax benefit. So if you haven't had your IRA this year, this is a chance for you to do it. The other aspect is security and also the whole aspect of protecting your assets. And this is one of the things that I really like about them is they went above and beyond using Coinbase custody and also Fireblocks for security. So both very, very trusted companies and definitely the ones that I would trust when I'm looking for something like a long-term hold in an IRA. Last but not least is the tokens. I mean, the tokens that you can get into, this of course is just some of the more popular ones. Look at that, metaverse tokens in your IRA. I love this. Then you've got, look at this layout, because this is where it gets really fun. Avalanche is in here, one of my favorite. Uh, Engine is in here, nice another, another uh, little metaverse play. You've got Atom in here, Tezos in here, Solana, Polygon, Yearn, even Sushi. Then you've got Uniswap, Stellar, and they keep adding more and more tokens. In fact, I know they are adding or planning to add Axie Infinity which is just another one to go into the long-term bag for my RA. So check it out. You'll get a hundred bucks in Bitcoin when you use our link below. Get into it, you're gonna love it. All right, let's jump into Helium because this one is, to me, one of the most unique aspects of blockchain and Web3 use cases out there and the ability to invest in it as a token. When you look at the Helium Ex um, Explorer, 571,000 hotspots, this map, I'll zoom in on some of this, but essentially this map, let's go over here to the East Coast because we have a lot happening down here in Florida. You can kind of see the map of the miners and the potential and the grid uh, ecosystem that they're building right now. But the advantage is, is that if you were to deploy a helium miner, and I'll explain that if maybe this is new to you and you're trying to figure out, hey, what kind of projects can I get into, Paul, if you're a little bit geeky, and maybe you've built computers in the past or you love doing you know, technology, knick-knack type stuff, this is one of those tools that you could actually do. We're gonna do a video of us deploying a helium miner right here in our studio. We'll, we'll show you how it's done. We'll guide you through. We're waiting on the miners to arrive, but we will show you guys how to do that. But essentially what happens is you, once you queue up, you're gonna show up on this map. And this map right here is gonna give you, along with many other miners, the ability to be able to earn that token as a mining. Now, this is not a proof of stake or a proof of work. This is a proof of use. And what I mean by that is as your bandwidth is being utilized for different kinds of networks out there within the ecosystem of your area that you're in, maybe it's an IOT, that you guys really don't realize how many 
devices are being used out there in the internet around, especially around 3G, 4G, 5G, the requirements are pretty heavy out there that are being backhauled on your regular telephone wireless poles that are out there that handles your, your mobile phone. All of that is doing backhaul work. That's where Helium comes in to help alleviate some of that backhaul requirement. Um, the other thing around this is, uh, I'm just kind of going to their website right here just to kind of show you, you can mine with uh, crypto with radio. Uh, they have a ton of different miners that you can go into. There are a, a lot of miners that are more advanced, especially the ones that can do 5G. And that is something that you should be, um, be aware of is that there are a lot of those available. I will also say if you are trying to get a helium miner, there's a big backlog of those as well. Uh, if you look at their last or one of the tweets right here, 3G's days are numbered. And this is the reason why it's very important right here. AT&T is shutting down its 3G network on February 22nd. That's just here in a few days. Um, and according to Tech Radar, uh, basically what you got to know is 3G services are going away. You're going to have to switch to some sort of alternative solution. This may be the solution that ends up handling a lot of that 3G traffic. Now, I know a lot of you are out there going, Paul, geez, who's got a 3G phone? A lot of devices run on 3G that you don't even know. If it's an IoT device, likely it's on 3G. If it is a device, maybe that's an older iPhone or older phones in general that you have, maybe your kid's phone, things of that nature, 3G is going to disappear from the AT&T network. And I think we're going to see more and more of that uh, flowing out there. And again, this is just another reason why we will see this obsolescence turn into potential opportunity for the market. Back to their tweet, at and sunsetting the 3G network February 22nd, as they said, transition from 3G to 5G will leave millions of devices obsolete, no data, no text, no 911 alerts. All that is a big, big deal. So I think this is, uh, this is a, just another reason why you should jump into taking a look at Helium. And this is, whether you just invest in it as a token, or maybe you want to look at it as a miner and try to, you know, expand the ecosystem out there, kind of cool. Uh, latest status for 5G hotspots, reservations coming from over 5G, along with a sneak peek of upcoming milestones in 3G, on the 5G development timeline. This is from FreedomFi. I just want to kind of jump down. FreedomFi is one of the mining companies that are building the devices themselves. The point we're making here is that there is a ton of demand on these. If you try to get a FreedomFi, it's still backlogged, I think, right now, up to eight weeks. Um, don't hold me to that depending on when you're watching this, but the point is, is they're still backlogged along with many of the other miners that are out there. Uh, we are gonna be getting a couple of new miners coming in, uh, hopefully in the next week or so. When, as soon as we get them, we'll, we'll definitely bring them up for you guys. But if you look here in January, 1,500 gateways shipped to reservation holders, all April wait list orders are fulfilled. So they're moving ahead. 1,500 uh, indoor CBRS, small cells chipped, uh, the Nova 430, I know we're getting into the weeds here, but basically what it shows is they're really lining up with getting a lot of their equipment uh, rolling. And then the new Helium 5G, this is the one I'm most interested in, this right here. New Helium 5G hardware vendors are announced. So this is going to be another reason that we're going to continue to see 5G advanced up into the Helium network. And once this gets rolling, this is going to be big. This is going to be big. Um, let's go over here too, because I want to talk here about a couple of things uh, around, let me go to the one I really want to talk about, which is right here. All right, so this is a good example of what you could use or what's going to be used for the networks like this. So can't find your check luggage, uh, Ben Gurion International Airport is using uh, an IoT platform uh, with this mom and group, and they're tracking assets at the airport easier for all. Another great use case for Helium. Again, just another advantage of how this works. And remember, this network is being built around all over the world. So the likelihood when we start to see really critical mass, I mean, we could literally see grid networks running all IoT devices and maybe at some point becoming a grid network for 5G and 4G use cases for traditional, ba or traditional uh, data. That's a big one. I like that. The other thing, if you look at Shark Tank and Kevin O'Leary, this is one of the tokens that he really likes. And we've talked about this before, is that um, H&T 
is one of those projects that, and he kind of went through this whole layout, but h and and Render are two of the projects that he really likes, mainly, again, because of the fact that they both provide these very unique utility aspects. And I think that is something that we'll continue to see on why this works. Now, he's not the only guy that's really talking big time about this. If you think about Chamath Palihapitiya, this guy is probably one of the world-class investors out there right now. Let me just kind of run this and see if we can play this audio for you because this is Talk a good one. The other, the other thing that I would offer up to people for them to think about is before you blindly go and rush into crypto, one way in which I try to think about these things is in the following way. You see these projects get started all the time and I would view each of these projects as a mini economy and really try to think what is the economic value of what's happening under the hood. So simple example, you know, Helium is an interesting project that's trying to build a completely decentralized, you know, 5G infrastructure, right? Render is a really interesting uh, project that's trying to build a completely decentralized, you know, graphical processing infrastructure, right? GPUs, essentially. In both of those things, you can quantifiably, economically measure what the value is that people get, right? In, in the case of Render, you're basically displacing an, an AWS instance. And so... Um, that has a price and a value. And so, you know, for render to be valuable, there's an economic value that it replaces. That's from the All In podcast. If you've not checked out the podcast there, it's got uh, some pretty great uh, people on it. You've got Jay Cal on there, which is Jason Calacanis, who is kind of the, the host. Uh, Chamath is on there. Uh, you've got David uh, Freeberg on there. And then also one of the, uh, David Sachs, one of the guys from um, the PayPal mafia that is on there. Point being is these are most of them billionaires and they've been able to do a lot in the crypto space. So they understand, and most all of them are tech guys and they understand the movement of technology. So it's a podcast I would recommend uh, to check out. I listen to it all the time and uh, definitely uh, would agree with most of their opinions on there. The other thing that has happened here is that you've got a couple of utility tokens that are really starting to shine. You. Helium, one. Render being the other. Render is a platform that enables devices, a network, to become a render station for use cases of people who are needing to utilize more computing power to render different types of graphic files. Now, why is that important? As we start to see metaverse demands, we're going to see a problem in terms of uptake, especially on critical mass. When critical mass starts to really number down and get to the point where we have a lot of users coming on board, a lot of partners coming on board, and then you have different metaverses that are going to be needing different types of digital assets, guess what's next? The next portion of that is going to the compute power that it's going to be required to essentially make those environments real. Now, to do that, Render is one of the key platforms to make that happen. If you go to this tweet right here, Render Network, the availability and development of computing power and uh, will constrain and define the metaverse. This is what I'm just talking about. Um, and this is a point of where they hit on the idea of tapping the network of idle GPUs by creating render. And this gives back to the point of really a competition for all AWS and or other servers out there that can act as, now remember, AWS mostly storage, but at some point we'll start to see enough cloud bandwidth to where what we're seeing with render become reality. And the key here will be how decentralized that potentially could be. Again, render giving you guys the opportunity to go in and actually run a node and be able to com handle compute power. So if you've got a gaming machine or a, a decently specced out PC, the potential is real. So just let me jump to this screen right here. This is just a YouTube video that kind of shows the different feature sets that they're running within just a terminal that's going to run on your PC. So he kind of shows the different types of availability. There's a 19, 20 by 1080, uh, which are the different kinds of render scopes that would most likely be sent to your device via those. Uh, look at that scope or that scene and then the samples per second. They go the render time, what it's going to take. It talks a little bit about what was sent over. Uh, and so on. So this client actually runs on a PC and the likelihood is you can run this either on a gaming PC or on a fairly well-specced out PC 
in the background while it's running, and you can kind of see him just pulling down the different GPU because he's got a 1070 GTX. You guys know that if you're a gamer. Uh, and then, yeah, so there you go. So that gives you an example. Let me kind of escape out of that one. That gives you an example of what render uh, could, could do. And if you go to their website, you can actually go in and start learning a lot more around what, uh, what you can uh, do potentially as a miner. And I would just go to that interest form. Now, one thing to be aware of is they're no longer taking programs. So this is one of those things where watch it, keep a, um, maybe a bookmark of, of potentially becoming a miner. And then I would stay on this. And once they open submissions back up, if you're interested in that, around going into something like that, this is the place to do it. So I think I would, I would definitely do it if you're into Helium. That's a little different game because it's a device that's going to get shipped to you. It's not a, a software element that's going to reside on a piece of machinery you already own. With Helium, you're going to have to spend some money to be able to get one of those miners. And when we do the Helium miner um, video for you, the kind of the how-to guide, follow us on that because there's a lot of little intricacies of how many miners are in your area as to what, you know, what that will relate to in terms of how much you earn, all that. But we're going to show that to you once we get those miners in and give you guys kind of a full, a full understanding uh, around it. But this is kind of a, I thought this was interesting from one of their, their PDFs just on the re render system flow. Uh, and you can kind of see it. You, a user is going to be out there on the databases that are out within the platforms requesting jobs. Those jobs are going to come in through the network. Uh, it's an exchange on Ethereum right now. And then, of course, user processing jobs are going to go right to the user. So it's just that simple. It's a gateway into the device that would enable you as a render miner to be able to perform that render in background. Uh, and maybe you do that in while you're sleeping or when you're not using the gaming device or, or a PC like that. Or at some point, maybe this gets to a point where you could actually do this and you know dedicate servers or PCs to actual render mining. That's another aspect I'd love to see. And if any of you guys are doing any of this, I would love you to hit us in the comments below. I'd love to find someone who's doing a really good job with Helium. And if you're into render, if you're a render miner right now, let us know. Maybe it's something we should get you on as an interview. But I'd love to see a little bit more about that. All right, before we wrap up, I want to jump over to the Power Index just to show you where these two projects are going. So um, we're going to jump into the Power Index. Remember, click our link below. You can get access to this. But I'm going to jump into our top 20 altcoins. Uh, and this, of course, is for the Monday. And if you look right here, this is Helium. Helium holding right here at 70, uh, 7531, a number two spot, Polygon leading the way. This is in our top 20. So you can he see Helium. Again, nice amplification, 7425. Probably one of the better ones out of the top uh, 20 with the exception of Polygon right there on top of it. And then you've got Tezos up here a little bit better. Um, or I should say a little bit uh, in the same range. But that is... Uh, one of the things you'll get from our top 20, we do all of our top 20s. Let me jump to the metaverse quickly, just to give you a quick look at that one. And this one is also another one that's important because Render is ranking right now on our top three. And this, of course, is our current data on the week. And we drop this every Monday. So it gives you the ability to start going in and researching a lot of these projects. But Render holding out at 78.19 and a 77.22. It's one of the highest amplifications for the week, which usually tells me that this is an opportunity to buy. Doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have lots of price action, though we may see some price action. But the point is, is that it gives you identifiers that are causing movement in some of these price action elements around a lot of these projects and tokens. So make sure and click the link below to join the Power Index if you're interested in this kind of data. Remember, these are market movers. The market movers are real simple. We'll put together data, research, all this kind of insight for you. Hopefully this has moved you in the next layer of your research and kind of moving you into thinking, hey, maybe I do need to look at utilities. But again, not investment advice. The idea is to get you moving in the right direction and hopefully help you guys kind of jump to the next level on understanding what blockchain and Web3 is really going to do. If you're watching us over or listening to us over on the podcast right now, we thank you. Make sure and click some stars right there on Spotify. Give us a rating on iTunes. 
But the best thing to do is jump over here to the YouTube channel, join us here, make sure and subscribe and like a couple of videos. It helps us out tremendously in the algorithm. And we probably have the biggest thing for you to do, and that is join the Diamond Circle. That's a very important thing because we're getting ready to do a giveaway on the official launch of our CPI. Giving away $1,000 in Bitcoin, probably going to happen tomorrow on a three o'clock stream when we go live. Got a lot happening there, so make sure and get in on that. You've got to be in the Diamond Circle to get access to potentially winning those rewards. And of course, if you want to reach me, you can hit me out on Twitter at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechBath.